Well, hello there. Let's take a look at the income and substitution effects, and more importantly, apply them to a couple of examples. So, what are the income and substitution effects? Let's do some definitions here. We're always talking about a price change. So if the substitution effect of a price change goes a little something like this. The price of A rises or falls. How does this affect everything? Well, it affects the relative price of A compared to all other goods. You think about broccoli, that's one thing you buy, but you also buy lettuce and you also buy ice cream and you also buy toilet paper. So the price of broccoli changing has an effect on the relative attractiveness of broccoli to everything else. So, so A, whatever A is, just got more expensive. It's now relatively more expensive than other goods, and we will find ourselves substituting away from A towards B. And the end result will be that if the price of A rises, the substitution effect will lead us to purchase less of the relatively more expensive thing and more of everything else. And this works in the opposite direction as well. If the price of good A were to drop, we would substitute toward A and away from other goods. Now the income effect happened at the same time and it pushes us in an opposite direction. For example, if the price of A rises or falls, this affects the amount of money we have to purchase everything else. So in the Generally speaking, it's not that our income actually changes, but the amount of disposable income left over after purchasing A will have changed. So that if A rises in price, there's less money available to buy everything else, so I buy less B, C, D, and everything else. Now let's move to some applications. So we've talked about the labor market the backward bending labor supply curve, for instance, thinking about workers, um, we want to think about them having a, a choice between working and not working, right? So labor, which represents consumption, good stuff like, you know, things we can buy, increase our standard of living, quality of life, but also leisure, which is an important quality of life measure as well. So we're either working or we're not working. And if we were to apply the idea of income and substitution effects, we need to figure out how we would think about it. Well, we need to figure out what the price of leisure is. That's the most important thing. And although we don't necessarily pay to do leisure, we do pay in giving up something. And what we give up is the wage rate from worker working. So we want to think about what happens when that price of leisure changes. The substitution effect leads us to um, if the price of uh, leisure changes, what do we what do we see? The price of A, or in this case, leisure rises. We're going to do less A, right? Less of the thing that is relatively more expensive, and more labor, and vice versa. If price of leisure were to drop, we would find ourselves doing more leisure and less of the alternatives. So in general, sub substitution effect is when your wage goes up, you're going to do less leisure and more work. But at the same time, the income effect is in charge. But at the same time, the income effect happens, right? So if the price of leisure, if, if the wage rate goes up, we know the price of leisure goes up, makes leisure relatively more um, costly than working. But at the same time, we know the income effect encourages us when the price of one thing goes up, we buy less of everything else. In this case, that's la labor. We're going to do less labor. Plus, and this is unique to this example, our income really is rising here because wages are the main part of our income. So we can afford more of all the good things, right? And leisure is a good thing. So the income effect leads us when wage rises to do more leisure. Substitution effect encourages us to do less leisure. Income effect encourages us to do more leisure when the wage rate rises. And whichever effect is dominant is going to be the thing um, that determines the shape of our labor supply curve. So the two forces at work, substitution effect pushes us away from leisure when, when the wage rate goes up, and income effect pushes us away from labor and toward leisure. And then the last application here would be the application of machines and human workers. So A is machines or robots. 
and B is human workers. If the price of machines changes, what happens? And we're only going to take one direction here because this is the direction that matters for us in the 21st century. The price of machines is getting cheaper. It's not going up. It's getting cheaper for the most part. So as machines get better and faster and cheaper, what happens? We find that humans, in as much as they are substitutes for machines, will be um, less employable because they're now relatively uh, more expensive due to the fact that machines got cheaper. So substitution effect leads employers to hire more machines and fewer workers. You would expect unemployment in that case. But the income effect is also in play. So if, if um, machines get cheaper, it's possible and, and in many cases very probable that there's more money left to spend on everything, on research and development, on workers, on um, opening new branches. So depending on which effect is dominant, we might see an increase in unemployment or a decrease in unemployment. It all depends on which effect dominates, and the answer is it always depends on the context.